Uh, okay, so as far as I see, this is this is uh, this is first for most of us. This virtual conference thing is first first time for me as well. And uh, thanks for joining. So, uh, what I'm going to talk about today is high performance cloud native microservices. And uh, I'm mainly uh, going to focus on distributed caching for high performance part and how you can use this, uh, this feature in Kubernetes environments. So, this is a bit about me. I'm a lead engineer at Hazelcast. I am mainly a Java developer, although I like playing other programming languages. Um, I live so far in multiple countries, and the last one is uh, US. I'm based uh, in East Coast US, North Carolina. And this is my Twitter handle. So just feel free to follow me over there. Um, so the agenda for today is um, I'm going to introduce Hazelcast. Uh, and talk about uh, distributed uh, caching patterns. And then the last part, I'll focus on Kubernetes best practices and how you can apply these distributed caching patterns in uh, Kubernetes environments. So Hazelcast, firstly and briefly, is an open source company. We have two Apache 2 licensed products on GitHub, Hazelcast IMDG and Hazelcast Jet. Hazelcast IMDG is I'm going to focus today. Hazelcast Jet is stream processing engine. And uh, Hazelcast Cloud is managed service of Hazelcast IMDG if you don't want to manage your Hazelcast cache cluster. Uh, you can use Hazelcast Cloud and management center is manage, management and monitoring dashboard. Um, so, yeah, we recently raised uh, some money and the company is remote friendly. So if you want to talk anything regarding remote, how remote working life, uh, how, how do you manage your day, et cetera, then feel free to ask such questions as well after the, the session in the break, breakout room. So this is main idea. So first, why distributed cash? Um, so in, in data intensive application architectures, so you, you normally have a data and you store it in data store. You, you need to have some query language like SQL to query your, 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 to query your um, data. You need to have uh, batch processing and stream processing just to, to make sense out of your data. But you also need to have cache for some redundancy. It can be because you want your data clo closer to the user or some performance requirements, et cetera, then you need to use cache because um, cache, uh, memory-based cache is faster than storage. And if you, ha you, if you have some performance requirements, uh, then cache is a solution, one of the solutions that you can use. And the uh, distributed uh, part is another uh, aspect of it. And uh, if your solution, CAT solution, is, uh, is uh, distributed, then it's natural fit for cloud native deployment. Uh, and um, so then that's one criteria, how you, how you select your, your solution for caching. So in this uh, in this diagram, uh, you simply see that uh, the different level of uh, cache and data storage. Um, so it basically says that if you are closer to CPU, you pay normally more, but you get uh, faster access. So in that sense, is hard disk is slowest one, and uh, random access memory is is faster than storage. So uh, caching is, is a solution uh, in that sense. So you store your data in random access memory for, for performance improvement. So let's just go through some caching patterns. So 
there, there are different hashing patterns, but those are the, the ones that mostly used. And if you are a developer, uh, you can choose one of those. So cache as a cache as a site is one solution. Cache as a system of record SOR is the other pattern that you can use. Cache as site is actually your application, your microservice is responsible for uh, cache operations. So your microservice for instance, check, look up the cache, the data, if it is inside the cache, if it's not inside the cache, if it's cache missed, your application logic goes to database, fetch data, and then put into the cache. And in subsequent call, you directly look up data or fetch data from cache for fast access. So this is one pattern that you can use in your application. The other uh, uh, caching pattern is cache as a system of record. Uh, and for this pattern, you mainly interface with your caching solution. So you do your puts and gets into your cache and your cache synchronously or asynchronously connect with your database for, for, for storage. Um, so this is cache as a system system of record, and uh, probably you heard about read to rule, write to rule, write behind operations. So write to rule and write behind is it's all the difference is uh, if your cache synchronization is sync or async operation. So those are two caching patterns. There are, there are one more caching pattern that you can use is CDC. And uh, this is also available in Hazelcast, in, in latest releases of Hazelcast Jet, where your, your uh, so Hazelcast can listen all the event logs from your relational database and refresh cache. And your application can just read the cache data from Hazelcast cluster. So this is the third option, but it's not included in this slide for today. So a simple uh, read through cache uh, operation uh, can can be yeah can be seen in this diagram. So on the left side, you have your application microservice. You do map that get just over here. And if it is cache missed, then Hazelcast just goes as a distributed cache solution. It just goes to data store, load the data, put inside the cluster, and return to your microservice. And in your next lookup operation, get operation, you will read the data directly from Hazelcast cluster. Uh, so this 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 uh, helps you gain some performance improvement because memory, as I said before, is faster than uh, disk-based data stores all the time. In this picture, you see a three-member Hazelcast cluster. And, um, in, and uh, in, the, in the next slide, as you see, uh, when you put your data in, in Hazelcast cluster, and if you use distributed map data structure, we call it distributed cache, distributed map. So it's basically key value store. Then the, the primary key value pair is actually in one partition in one member, and the backup is in another member. So Hazelcast distributed map is a partition data structure. So if a member Let's say that the, the member that owns the data crashes, then your data will not be uh, will not disappear, will not be lost, uh, because the backup data will be the backup uh, member will promote the, the partition as a primary, and then it will send uh, the the backup of that primary into the other mode, other uh, Hazelcast member. So. Hazelcast has by default one backup count, which means that whatever data you put into your distributed map, it will be backed up 
by another member. So it can be up to three, up to six uh, members, your backup count, or it can even be zero if you don't need, a, I mean, a backup uh, and you are okay with losing data. Um, but in, in most of the architectures, losing cache data is not a good option because uh, just refreshing this cache data from your data store is an expensive operation. So you, you can decide based on your architecture for the backup count, uh, and the default backup count is one in Hazel Cache. So uh, this is, um, so I talked about the distributed caching and how Hazel Cache works in that sense. So I am going to a bit match this with Kubernetes environment in uh, in the next slide. So in 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 Kubernetes for distributed caching patterns, you can see different um, different options that you have. So this is the list. So embedded is one, sidecar is another, proxy cache is, is another solution, and the client server is the last one that I'm going to talk about today. So let's let's start with embedded. Uh, so this diagram, embedded diagram, is uh, it, it, it gives a simple um, Kubernetes environment. So HTTP request comes in on the left side and it is handled by your load balancer Kubernetes service and your load balancer forwards your data, uh, forwards for your request into one of the uh, microservices that you have inside your uh, uh, deployment. So in this picture, Hazelcast member is actually embedded into your microservice. And this is available in Java uh, programming language and GAVM. So you can actually embed uh, Hazelcast member, Hazelcast node inside your microservice. The, the good part with this, this kind of architecture is that you don't need to have a separate cache cluster so it is embedded with your microservice. Um, and it, that, in that sense, it's very simple to start with. Uh, on the other hand, some people don't want to keep cache data together with their stateless microservice. And they also don't want to scale their cache cluster along with their microservices. So, uh, let's say in this picture, if you have, now you see two replicas of the microservice, but if you have 100 Spring Boot microservice replicas for the same microservice, then you will end up having 100 member Hazelcast cluster, which is not easy to maintain for this use case. And uh, it is also not needed because your data might not be big as compared to your a replica count of microservice. So, um, so this is the simplest solution that you can use uh, with some advantages and disadvantages. So again, as a list of advantages and disadvantages, so it's simple Java, JVM language only, and you need to have data collocated with microservice JVM, which is not favorable by most of people all the time because you might end up having uh, garbage collector issues, etc. So the, the, the next uh, pattern that we see uh, adopted by open source community and uh, users as well is sidecar pattern in Kubernetes environment where you can run your Hazelcast cluster members as a sidecar uh, inside the pod, and in this in this architecture, you are not stuck with with Java only. So you can use multiple programming language. As we can offer lots of different uh, uh, programming language uh, client libraries. So 
you can use those client libraries to enable caching and also you don't have to create a separate cache cluster so it is very similar to embedded uh, one that which i mentioned in in previous slide um, and also the other advantage here uh, is that you can uh, you can uh, specify the limits memory and cpu limits uh, differently on both containers. So you can, for instance, give four gigabyte memory to Hazelcat member container, uh, whereas your microservice can just uh, can be set just one gigabyte. That's not possible in the previous slide, but here you have that advantage to to set your your resource requirement. Um, so. Again, the sidecar is simple. You can use multiple programming languages, Java, Node.js, .NET, Python, Golang. I mean, so multiple languages supported by Hazelcast. Uh, and these, those client libraries are open source as well, so you can go and check on GitHub. Um, and data collocated with microservice pods, Kubernetes pods, which is different than embedded, because in embedded, it was in Java Virtual Machine. So the third architecture that we see is HTTP reverse proxy caching. So the, the good thing with this is that you can pretty much enable every any microservice that you have, you can pretty much enable caching for that without even changing a single line of code. Uh, this is something you can apply your department or company wide because when you create this Evercast cost sidecar, uh, you can deploy it. Sorry, um, you can deploy it with um, with uh, with any microservice that you have. So as a sidecar. So in this picture, as you see, HTTP request comes in, load balancer just forward this to one of the ports that is available and uh, your proxy sidecar handles the caching part. If the, the, uh, the HTTP response is available for this request, you can just uh, reply with the full HTTP response or you can just forward the request to the microservice and then it just uh, process your request. This is this is not available out of uh, off the shelf component as an off the shelf component. That's something you have to implement it. One uh, interesting thing that's going on with Envoy Proxy, which is a well-known service proxy in the market, uh, they just created a caching abstraction uh, recently, and Hazelcat implemented cache filter. Uh, uh, plugin option so that if you are using an Envoy proxy uh, user in, in the next releases, I think you will be able to use Hazelcast in, in this, uh, in this uh, architecture and with similar usage. And uh, again, you inject your cache into every microservice without changing the code and you have you don't have to have any caching API inside your microservice. So those are the advantages of HTTP reverse proxy. And the last one is client server. In the client server mode, uh, you basically separate your cache cluster and microservices uh, part, so cache cluster layer and microservices layer. Uh, which is uh, which is good for for some uh, DevOps environments because the the management and main, maintenance of those have have uh, are are different responsibilities and different teams just maintain those parts. So in that sense, you have a microservices layer. You use Hazelcat supported client and. Uh, you also have a cache cluster somewhere deployed. It can be inside Kubernetes, it can be outside Kubernetes, or it can even be a managed service. Uh, 
uh, then this this maintenance are are gonna be different uh, responsibilities and we see this this architecture most in production environment and uh, we we haven't see that people are starting with embedded mode and then based on their requirements or change change the requirement changes over time they move to client server over time so um, so that's the uh, that's the last one that for the architectures that you can apply for distributed caching um, one other solution for client server architecture is using Hazelcast cloud and and, and I as I mentioned in my previous slide uh, you can deploy Hazelcast inside Kubernetes cluster or outside Kubernetes cluster in a VM for instance so that your uh, microservices can reach this cache cluster but the third option is you can use a managed service which is for instance Hazelcast cloud is a managed service so you can it's a pay, pay as you go model you can just go and start your cluster on cloud.hazelcast.com and uh, you have the cache cluster but all the, all the maintenance security patch uh, Hazelcast upgrade etc bug fixing are done by Hazelcast so it's, it's a managed service in that sense so again client server is mostly called cache as a service uh, it, it supports multiple programming language and the biggest difference in client server is that you maintain Hazelcast cluster uh, for instance as a, as a as a different department or different team and your microservices layer is is maintained by another team okay uh, so far i i talked mostly about the the patterns how you can use how, how you can use distributed caching in your applications and how you can deploy and use it together with kubernetes uh, in the next section i'll just go through for client server architecture how you can deploy Hazelcast cluster into uh, Kubernetes cluster. Um, Hazelcast Helm chart is the easiest way to install it. So Helm install stable Hazelcast is, is just a, one simple command that you can run if, you, if Helm is, uh, is available on your system. Help is a is a package manager for Kubernetes clusters. Um, when you execute, when you run that command, you will have a three-member Hazelcast cluster plus management center in your Kubernetes cluster. So we 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 keep it we keep the intelligent intelligent defaults in our Helm chart, but it's highly configurable. So you can you can configure uh, values YAML of the Helm chart or you can pass some uh, command uh, level parameter to the Helm command so that you can just customize your deployment. Uh, just as an example, if you say metric enable true and pass, pass this parameter to Helm command or update it on values YAML, then every member of Hazelcast in the cluster will expose its, its metric in Prometheus format. So if you have a Prometheus deployment in your, in your Kubernetes cluster, Prometheus will start scraping uh, Hazelcast-specific uh, metric and store it inside Prometheus. So uh, this hand chart is one solution. Uh, Hazelcast is uh, on official Kubernetes Helm chart repository. Hazelcast also has its own Helm chart repository as well. So you can choose whichever you want. And this command is actually changed because this is Helm 2. If you upgrade to Helm 3, you don't even have to have a tiller running on your cluster. And uh, but Helm 3 command is, uh, is different than this one. Just just go and check Helm 3 repository. Hazelcast is both 
supported by HAM2 and HAM3. And the other uh, way to deploy Hazelcast is uh, operatorhub.io. And uh, you can also use uh, Hazelcast option in OpenShift and IBM Cloud Private too. Um, this is for Kubernetes operator. As, uh, along with the HAM chart, Hazelcast offers Kubernetes operator as well. So if you are in favor of using operators, then uh, Hazelcast has, has an option for you to use. And the main difference between HAM chart and operator, operator is actually running and on the Kubernetes cluster and extending Kubernetes API with CRD, CRD so that uh, you can just uh, deploy a Hazelcast cluster just using by kubectl. So this is uh, so you don't need to have a Helm client installed in your in your system. So this is another option. And the third option, as I said, if you don't want to deploy Hazelcast cluster by yourself, you can just go and uh, use Hazelcast uh, Hazelcast cloud. So, so, so far we talked about uh, how you can use distributed caching and uh, how you can use in Kubernetes and how to deploy it. And I'm going to go through some deployment best practices for Kubernetes uh, where you can apply you to, into your own architecture and deployment. So one is predictable resource allocation. So predictable resource allocation is actually an important topic and it's not really specific to Kubernetes also. You, you always have to calculate your CPU and memory requirements for your deployment and for your Hazelcast cluster, this is a cache cluster. Um, so we suggest to set requests and resource uh, <coughs> uh, requests and limits on resources the same value. Um, if you know, uh, if you, if you don't know what this request and resource limit uh, request and uh, limits for resources, it is actually um, telling Kubernetes scheduler how 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 to how to assign resources to your for instance, for memory case, uh, if you set your request to one gigabyte and if you set your limit to four gigabytes, it means that I want to have one gigabyte memory, uh, but it can go up to four gigabytes. So the reason I'm 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 uh, suggesting to set those values to to the same value. Let's say it is it is for four gigabyte. Is both of them are four gigabytes because uh, there are some quality of services for Kubernetes. And if you don't specify any of those values, Kubernetes scheduler. Kubernetes is all about resource management. Kubernetes uh, scheduler will just kill your pod if it is not def defined the, the resource requirement. So it's better to define it. Uh, if you define but set the, the just be clever and set request minimum value and limit the higher value, then you are going to be the next target by the scheduler uh, to be killed in case of uh, resource issues in your Kubernetes cluster. But if you set those values the same, then Kubernetes scheduler will kill your pods in in the last in the last. Uh, I mean, uh, last uh, option. So, uh, so this is in that sense an important, and it's better to calculate those requirements and set as at the same value. Um, the pod anti affinity is another uh, another important topic. So pod anti affinity is actually means that in in the sense of Hazelcast, Hazelcast is a distributed solution. So, and uh, multiple Hazelcast pods, if you don't set pod anti affinity, might end up running on the same Kubernetes node, which is underlying VM. 
So in case of VM crash, et cetera, then you will, you will lose both members at the same time, which causes some cash uh, loss. And as I explained in, in, in the previous um, slide, um, the cash loss is, is not really a big deal, big deal all the time, but depending on your architecture, reloading this cash into member, et cetera, can cause you some uh, performance issues. So it's better to set anti-affinity in your deployment, which guarantees that every Hazelcast member pod will run on a different Kubernetes node or different underlying VM, infrastructure VM. So, uh, so it's, it's, it's safer for, for node crashes in that sense. And it's a, it's a good observation if you can do it. And uh, the, other, uh, the other deployment best practices is zone aware feature which is available in Hazelcast. So Hazelcast and distributed uh, applications, products, et cetera, is all about network latency. So you might not want to deploy Hazelcast members uh, with a high network latency in different availability zones in that uh, picture. Um, but it, it all, it's all about your architecture. Uh, you can choose multi-zone if your architecture prefers availability over performance, for instance. So in that, in that sense, for the availability zones, uh, zone aware feature is actually creating zones for your Hazelcast cluster and manage the backups of the cluster members. As you see in this picture, um, you have three members in one availability zone and uh, you have three members in other availability zone. That's how Kubernetes scheduler is, um, is distributing your members uh, inside the cluster. And if you switch on the zone aware in Kubernetes cluster, then that means all the backups of the availability zone B so three members will be hosted by availability zone A. And it's the other way around also for the other members. So the backups of the members in one availability zone will always be kept in other availability zone. So what, what that means is that if your availability zone just goes away, crashes, or you have some problem with the available, available, available zone uh, networking, then you will not lose data because all the other backups will promote as will be promoted as a primary on the first availability zone and you will be fine with, with that. Um, so this, this was my presentation. 